I'd like to start off by asking a very simple question, which is, what is a data system? What are these systems that we're working so hard to build for which we go to conferences like this to learn how to build them? Well, I think a good place to start is that a data system is a system that manages the storage and querying of data. But I don't think that tells the full story, because a data system has a lifetime measured in years. And during those years of operation, there will be many different versions of your application. There will be features that come and go. There will be different sources of data that come and go. A data system is not static. It is dynamic, fluid, and constantly evolving. And in those years of operation, there will be many hardware failures. And the data system needs to keep on running through those hardware failures. Likewise, there will be many human mistakes made, and the data system needs to keep on going through those human mistakes. The data systems that we build are sophisticated and diverse. And behind these simple interfaces are enormous clusters of machines. But it's a mistake to think that it's just machines powering these applications. Humans are an integral part of any data system. It's humans who write, test, and deploy the code. It's humans who do operational work to the system while it's running. It's humans who confuse the metric system and the imperial system. It's humans who make operational mistakes and accidentally delete data from the database. Now, I remember my first year as a programmer, something happened to me that really stuck with me. I had a coworker in the office who had spent about three weeks uh, collecting a data set from the internet, and he was just waiting to have enough data so that he could analyze it. And I was just doing some operational work, and I just made a huge mistake and accidentally deleted all this guy's data. And I, I ruined three weeks of work for this guy. And this was my first year as a programmer, so I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, was I going to get fired for making such a careless mistake? So I sent out an email just apologizing profusely, and I was surprised at how sympathetic everyone was. And I remember one guy came up to me afterwards, and he said, Nathan, congratulations. You're now a professional programmer. <laughs> but this is one of the fundamental truths of software development. We don't know how to make perfect software. Bugs can and will be deployed to production. People will deploy bugs that increment a counter by two instead of by one. People will deploy services accidentally that initiate denial of service attacks on critical internal infrastructure. People will make operational mistakes like accidentally deleting data. This is a fact. It's not a question of if people will make mistakes, but when and how much. Now, when we look at the work that's been going on in the industry the past few, few years, there's been a lot of amazing works, work in building systems that are tolerant to machine failure. And just some of these amazing techniques and algorithms are listed here. But the human still remains the biggest moving piece in any data system. Right? You have to plan for humans to fail. And I think the only rational way to go about the design of a data system is to treat humans like you treat any other part of your architecture, just like you treat your disks and your CPUs and your memory and your routers and your switches and your software. It's another piece that can fail, and you have to design for it, and you have to engineer for it. I would assert that the worst consequence of human error is data loss or data corruption, because as long as neither of these things happen, at least you can fix what went wrong, or at least uh, uh, greatly impact the impact of such an error. And this brings us to the topic of mutability. Mutability is the U and D in CRUD, the updates and deletes in the four standard database operations of create, read, update, delete. Now, mutable systems inherently lack human fault tolerance, right? Because at a fundamental le level, the system is always modifying and deleting data. So any mistake could delete or corrupt data in, to an arbitrary fashion. Right? I've experienced it, and I'm sure most of the people here have experienced that in the past as well. But there's an alternative way to build data systems, and that's to base your systems on immutability. Now, an immutable system looks at the world differently. You see, an immutable system, you keep state that represents your current view of the world, and whenever your current view of the world changes, you update your state to reflect that. In an immutable system, you do something different. Instead, you capture a historical record of events where every event happens at a particular time and is always true. So let's look at a simple example. Let's say you're keeping location information on people. Here's what a mutable data model for that might look like. You would have two columns, where one column is the person and another column is a location. So here, Sally lives in Philadelphia and Bob lives in Chicago. 
And when Sally moved to New York, what, New York, what you would do is you would find the cell that corresponds to Sally's location, and you would update it to say New York instead of Philadelphia. This is pretty standard practice. It would look different in an immutable world. Instead of capturing where a person lives now, you capture where did they live as of a certain time. Right? So Sally, Sally lives in Philadelphia as of one certain time, and Bob lives in Chicago as of another certain time. And when Sally moves to New York, you add a brand new data record saying that Sally lives in New York as of this more recent time. The fact that Sally now lives in New York does not change the fact that she used to live in Philadelphia. Both of these facts can be true at the same time. Immutability greatly restricts the range of errors that can cause data loss or data corruption. Because at a fundamental level, you're no longer modifying and deleting data. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff like add in really tight permissions so that it's really hard for a random mistake to accidentally delete or modify data. So an immutable system is vastly more fault tolerant than a mutable system. And as a side note, it's also much easier to reason about systems based on immutability. But that's a much longer discussion, definitely worth exploring on your own, but beyond the scope of this talk. So what can we conclude from this? Like, how can we use this information to do a better job of architecting our data systems? Well, I think one conclusion is that your source of truth in any data system should always be an immutable data store. And we look at the way people build systems, you know, this is what it usually looks like. Your source of truth is a mutable database, and your application does reads and writes into that mutable database. Right? This has been standard practice when using relational databases, and is what people have been doing for decades, and people have continued to use this uh, technique as they've adopted NoSQL solutions. But rather than build systems like this, let's start building systems like this, where your source of truth is an immutable data store, and then you build specialized views on top of that immutable data that then go on to serve your application. This is an approach I advocate in my book, and it's an approach that's very much doable today. Right? One simple way to build your immutable data store is just to use flat files in HDFS. And whenever you want to add new data, you add a new file containing your new data records to some directory in HDFS. And then you use systems like Hadoop and Storm to build your specialized views, which get indexed into your specialized NoSQL databases. And then those views go on to serve your application. Right? So you can see NoSQL databases you know, and mutable databases still have a place in an architecture like this, but they're not your, your, your source of truth. And you can recompute those views at any point from your immutable source of truth. I, for one, would like to see more work done in building databases and data systems that are based on immutability. Um, and I think we'll all be much better off for it. Thank you.